السلام عليكم حياكم الله انا راكان ورجعنا من جديد وهذه المره مع لقاءات حصريه مع الممثل كريس هيمسورث والمخرج سام من فيلم اكستراكشن 2 في البدايه اشترك بالقناه اذا ما كنت مشترك وفعل جرس التنبيهات وعطنا لايك في حال عجبك هذا المقطع ولا تنسى تشاركنا تحت في التعليقات رايك عن فيلم اكستراكشن 2 بالعاده اقدم مراجعه مع المقابلات ولكن ودي اقول رايي بكل اختصار عن فيلم اكستراكشن 2 بدون حرق وكذلك ترى حتى المقابلات ما فيها حرق الجزء الثاني من اكستراكشن افضل بكثير بالنسبه لي من الجزء الاول مشاهد الاكشن القصه وحتى الشخصيات نفسها كيف اخذوها وطوروها اكثر وضعوا في بعض الشخصيات شيء من التعقيد مشاهد الأكشن في الجزء الأول كانت ممتعة رهيبة ولكن عدم وجود مشاعر ما بين الشخصيات خلانا فقط نشوف مشاهد أكشن نعم مشاهد الأكشن كانت رهيبة في الجزء الأول ولكن ماذا لو كانت المشاهد أفضل وأرهب وأمتع مع وجود شيء من القصة وشيء من التعقيد عند الشخصيات هذا اللي صار بالجزء الثاني من إكستراكشن حطوا طبقات للشخصيات ماضي الشخصيات وكيف أثر هذا الماضي على حاضرها كذلك يبدو لي انهم راح يتوسعون بعالم اكستراكشن مثل اللي صار مع جون ويك جون ويك بدا جون ويك 1 2 3 4 والحين نتكلم عن اعمال مشتقه باعتقادي الشخصي راح نشوف نفس الشيء مع اكستراكشن مشاهد الاكشن في اكستراكشن 2 خيالية جماعة شيء لا يصدق مرة الساعة الأولى بدون لا أحس مشاهد أكشن بأشكال مختلفة وكلها أو أغلبها حسب اللي صار بيني وبينهم باللقاء أنه أغلبها حقيقية يعني ما راح أحرق عليك ولكن في أشياء ما تتخيلها في أشياء تعتقد أنها جرين سكرين في أشياء تعتقد أنها ستونز أو أشخاص يأدون حركات خطيرة بدال الممثلين الرئيسيين ولكن راح تعرف وراح تكتشف من خلال اللقاءات أنه كريس هيمسورث والكاست كامل كانوا يتدربون ويصورون ما بين 14 إلى 16 ساعة يوميا عموما أنا ما ودي أطول صراحة ولكن اللقاءات استمتعت فيها أتمنى أنكم تستمتعون فيها كذلك راح تشوفونها كذا مقطعة بشكل حلو بشكل يعني سريع استمتعوا فيها اللقاءات شيء مهم جدا في المهنة اللي أنا قاعد أسويها لنفسي والسي في اللي قاعد أسويه لنفسي وهذا اللقاء يعتبر من أهم اللقاءات اللي سويتها نعم في لقاءات أخرى مهمة الأخوين الروسو إثن هوكي الأخيرة زاك سنايدر ولكن هذا اللقاء مع كريس سوورث وسام من اللقاءات المهمة لا تنسى تفعل الترجمة الترجمة من داخل يوتيوب فعلها واستمتع Congratulations on the film. I really enjoyed Extraction 2 more than Extraction 1. Extraction 1 was incredible, but Extraction 2 was too crazy, actually. Yeah. Your character, Rake, is a complex figure with a lot of depth. How did you approach exploring his backstory in the sequel? Well, thank you very much. Um, it's tricky making a, a sequel, and I've done it a few times to things. And, because often you complete the arc or the hero's journey in the first film, especially the origin film, and by the end of it, they've learned all the lessons they need to have learnt and they've become the hero they need to be. We finished this film with the character riddled with bullets and he was a piece of Swiss cheese by the end of it and he, he was, was still detection. emotionally as physically damaged as he was physically. So this was an opportunity to, to really dive into who this character was and it was almost like an opportunity to tell an origin story for the second time and that was the most important thing for me was what drove this character what are the complexities what is he burying beneath the surface why does he act this way why are these the suicidal tendencies or approach to his line of work complete disregard for himself there's a self-loathing there's a self-hatred there's a guilt shame element to it so to be able to explore that gave the character many layers i think it allowed the audience to ask deeper questions and then having the emotional component there really complements the action the integration of the two is what I think makes it resonate with an audience. You know, if you just have action with no emotion, it's just noise. Whereas having having both, you're much more invested. The action scenes in Extraction 2 are most intense scene that I ever see in my life, especially the one with the 21 minutes. So can you talk more about your approach and design in that scene? Yeah, f first off, thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed that sequence. We had a lot of fun doing it. It was a challenge. We spent it was four or five months planning and preparing and rehearsing. There were a lot of moving parts, a lot of technical aspects that had to be planned out. So, you know, the most important part was communication between departments. It was like once I had decided with the stunt team what we were going to shoot and how we were going to do it, where we were going to do it, now you had to execute that. So we had to communicate because sets had to be built. We had, you know, this train configuration that we had to figure out because we had to, you know, it wasn't only cameras and actors. We had all the crew that had to be pulled behind this train. 
Right. So, so many elements went into it, and it took us, I think, 29 days to shoot. Yeah, it was, a, it was a team effort, and every department was fully invested every day in every setup. So it was really, when you talk about collaboration and filmmaking, it was very apparent, and it was at, you know, at, at its best in a sequence like this. Would you do a scene much longer than 21? After the first film, I said to Sam, I'm really proud of that one, but let's never do it again. <laughs> and then he said, well, he said, we're doing it and we're doubling it. I don't know, maybe the third film is one continuous one -er. I don't know. Uh, how does the film expand the original story? Well, with the original film, you know, we had a very strong emotional core, but we didn't dive in too deeply because the nature of the story it was, you know, we had just enough to keep people wanting more. So in this movie, we expanded on that origin story, if you will, to dive more deeply into Tyler's past and what makes him who he is, what drives him as a character. And we tried to introduce and put on screen a lot of the things that Chris and I and, and Joe and the three of us talked about in the preparation for the first movie. There was a lot of backstory that we knew that we kind of, you know, talked about about and made the character really three-dimensional, but we didn't get to see a lot of that in the first movie. So we thought it was exciting to put a lot of that on screen so audiences could see what we knew and were so excited about that made this character who he is. The action scenes and Extraction 2 are incredibly intense. Can you share some of your experiences preparing for the filming? Yes, yeah, so well, I'd just come off the back of shooting Thor Love and Thunder and um, I was a Big. lot bigger than I would yeah. normally be. Um, yeah, I can see. And yeah, it's just as big as, uh, as I've ever got. That was the uh, the byproduct of COVID and lockdown and just sitting there and training all day long doing nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I came into this film of that size, which wasn't ideal for this type of film. And so I wasn't able to lose the weight as much, but I was able to become more functional. All my training went from aesthetic bodybuilding to functionality and movement and flexibility. And and martial arts and cardiovascular increase training. Um, and then the sheer nature of shooting the scenes. We shoot for 14 hours a day, and the whole time you're moving, you're in an action scene. And then afterwards, go and rehearse for a couple of hours at the end of the day. So you're kind of clocking 16 hours of physical exertion. So that in itself was the forced adaptation into what I needed to be to play this character. I'm going to find the reason I fought my way back. You were heavily involved in MCU, and I remember I had a junket with uh, the Rosso brothers regarding uh, the Grey Man, and I asked them about an idea of combining extraction and the, the Grey Man in one world where you can find Ryan Gosling against Chris Hemsworth. I'm not going to ask you about Idris Alba and his role in this movie because I come up with a theory Ooh, I love about Luther. Uh-huh. Idris okay. Alba. Yeah, and, and extraction. So what do you think about such an idea where you combine Luther, the Grey Man, and extraction in one world? I think you're onto something here. Netflix, pay attention. I think what, what Marvel has done really brilliantly is mixing all of these characters and overlapping these storylines. So to, to start to do something like that with Netflix original ideas, I think that's pretty cool. And I, I think that would be something that fans would love to see. I, I came up with the idea because Idris Alba has no name in the movie. That's right. Even in the credit, yeah. Let me finish with this question. I met the Russell brothers, the Grey Man Junket, and I asked them, what if we uh, combined the two worlds of the gray man and extraction in one world where Rick go across Ryan Gosling's from the gray yeah. man. It'd be a short movie, mate. It'd be a short movie. <laughs> he wouldn't he wouldn't he wouldn't get through two minutes. <laughs> I would tear into pieces like the scarecrow in the Wizard of Oz. You know when the flying monkeys come and rip the scarecrow apart? That'd be it. That's to you, Ryan. I love you, but you're done, bro. <laughs> I'm joking, right? There was discussions about that, and I think the uh, ah integration of any of the, I mean, oh. look, and, and this is not nothing to okay. think, but we've talked about, you know, oh, imagine if John Wick and Tyler Ake met, or imagine if, you know, the Grey Man and, and Tyler Ake, and, I mean, who knows about any of it, but I love the creative discussion around that. I think it's fun, and I think the fans would appreciate it. So that's why Idris Alba has no name in the movie, so maybe he will be Luther. Yeah. I... Have no, no, that's this not. This is the my plan. theory, actually. That's not the plan, but I may steal it. 
and uh, and claim it as my own. <laughs> How did you work with Chris and Go to develop their characters and their relationship in this film? Because you know the first one has not that depth. Yeah, well, the yeah the first movie we left a lot of mystery there at, at as to the relationship between Tyler Rake and Nick Khan. What where is that? Where did it begin? Where is it going? How do they feel about each other? And in this movie, we tried to maintain the mystery because we didn't want to dive you know go too far into a love story because I think that that goes counter to what we've talked about with with uh, Golshepta and Chris about who these people are but we did want to expand their relationship and how they interacted and the depth of their friendship and commitment and loyalty to each other because they're both willing each one willing to die for the other and I think that's a very powerful thing between these two these two characters and they they fight on screen as equals and I think they we tried to show that that, they, that Nick she she belongs in a Tyler Rake universe So thank you, Sam, and uh, see you in Extraction 3. Hey, who knows? We'll see how the second one does, but if Extraction 3 happens, we'd you know, love to make it so. And that's it, guys. We've been able to see the events. I hope you've enjoyed it. The idea that I've heard. I hope it'll happen on the days of the day, so it'll be a credit, honestly. Anyway, guys, like and share this video at this time. Share it with your channel if you haven't already, and do the notification bell. In the end, I want you to share me below in the comments what's the best question at this time, and what's the question that I was going to ask if I was a mechanic. With the fact that you can't answer the question outside of Extraction 2. Enter your comments. نشوفكم المقطع الجاي سلام